是个梗。不来烦。What's the problem? I've lost my little girl. Thing in the precinct? No. Um. Well, possibly. I don't. I don't know. What? Well, you think you've lost her? Well, I, I left her with a friend, and we arranged to meet here. But I've been waiting for half an hour now. Well, are you sure about the time you're supposed to meet? Oh yeah. And the place? Yeah, positive. How old's your little girl? She's five. That's probably a simple explanation. Right. What's your little girl's name? Uh, Natalie. Natalie Latham. Right. And the friend? Betty. Well, I'll go and get security to do a PA announcement, yeah? Well, then there might not be in the precinct. All right, first things first. We're going to put the call out over the PA system. Well, I did try. You got a problem with that? Only the usual. Clapped out equipment. I'll see if I can get a gargle out of it, but uh, don't hold your breath. I wouldn't leave her normally, but I was looking for a dress and trying things on with a five-year-old and Toby, you know. It's terrible, I can imagine. I wish I'd taken it with me now. What was Natalie wearing? Uh, a, a patterned blue coat with a hood, um, some woolly tights. What oh, colour? Colour? The tights? Red. No, um, white. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. White, I think. Right, and what was Betty wearing? Uh, an anorak, a mauve anorak. And she's about what age? Oh, she's getting on. She must be about 70. And have you left Natalie with her before? Once or twice, just to get a, a paper or something. But, you know, five minutes at the most. Do you think they'll catch that? Um, what? Betty's about 70, you say? Yes. Yeah. Well, perhaps she got confused. Came early, gave up and went home. But with Natalie, took Natalie home with her. Or is it possible? I don't know. Have you got Betty's phone number? What? Her phone number. No. Well, never mind, it's not a problem. Uh, do you have her address? Um, Farley Estate, I think. Farley Estate, yeah. No road or number? What about her surname? Her second name? No. No. Oh my God, what have I done? You don't know her second name? I haven't a clue. Oh my God, Jerry would kill me. All units from 181. Missing girl in or around the Gateside shopping precinct. Name of Natalie Latham, aged five. Wearing a blue pattern coat and red or white tights. Last seen with a woman aged about 70. Wearing a most anorak. Name of Betty. Thanks. Narika, it's Sergeant Cryer. What are the details? The little girl and the woman haven't made an agreed rendezvous, Sarge. Some sort of mix-up? Probably, but the mother's becoming very distressed. How long has she been waiting? About 35 minutes, Sarge. She doesn't know the woman's second name or her address. What about your radio link to the men in the precinct? What, all two of them? Well, I'll give them a buzz, but they won't shift for a stray kid. Happens too often. Nine times out of ten, the kid's in a sweet shop having a fag. Yeah, well, this one's five years old. Well, it's a joke, son. I'll give him a buzz. Thank you. How long have you known Betty? Um... Uh, must be about, um, a year. I, I met her in the cafe in there. We just got talking, you know, and... And then the next week I bumped into her again, and since then we've met up most weeks, same time, same place. Have you looked in the cafe? Oh yeah, it's the first place I looked. I'd, I'd never thought twice about leaving her. She's like a granny to Natalie, you know. She'll bring a, a packet of sweets or a little toy, you know, so, a, a little gift. Did she bring her something today? Today? No, no, not today. Well, perhaps they've gone off to buy something then. I just don't know what could have happened. God, you kill me. Has Betty got any family? Yeah, um, a son. He uh, lives in Newcastle with kids of his own. Simon, Carl and Andrew. Yeah, I know all about them, but I don't know Betty's name. It's stupid, isn't it? But you know she lives on the Farley estate. Well, not for certain. I just know that she gets the 55 bus that goes there. Morning. 
Is the manager about? Well, he was a minute ago. I'm looking for an old lady and a little girl. Yeah? Well, the little girl's five years old. She's wearing a blue patterned coat. The old lady's wearing a mauve anorak. Yeah. Yo, have you seen anyone like that in here today? They might have been in. I wouldn't know. Customers. Don't look at them. Like, I know they're there, but they have to have two heads for me to notice them. It's your job, isn't it? See things? This is mine. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. This is the only one I've got with me. It's not too clear. Will it do? I've, I've got a better one at home. Good. We may need it. Becky took that. This photo? Yeah. Do you have one of her? No, she didn't want one taken. Why not? Well, I don't know. I remember trying, but she said she wasn't dressed for it. I, mean, I suppose she was just camera shy. Camera shy? Well, yeah, some people are, aren't they? She wanted a copy of it, though. I mean, like I said, she thought of us as a family, with her own being up in Durham. Newcastle. What? You said her son lived in Newcastle. Did I? Yeah. What, is Newcastle in County Durham? No. Well, maybe Betty got confused. I, I might have misheard. I, I don't know. I, I can't think. There's nothing doing. We heard. The PA system sounds like a British rail region. Yeah, and the security manager's working off the same amp. He's got one man off sick and only two other deadbeats to cover the old precinct. Did I hear right? The girl's mother doesn't even know the old lady's second name. Correct. She's left her kid with someone she doesn't know. Here, look at this. Sierra Hospital 181, receiving. Go ahead, Narika. Polly, is Sergeant Cryer there? Go ahead, Narika. Um, no joy here, Sarge, but we got a photo of the kid, but it's only so-so. We'll check with the hospital casualty departments and relay the description through the business watch line. Sarge. Keep me posted, Bob. Sir. There you go. It just scares the hell out of me how some people can leave their kids with virtual strangers. Oh, come on, Narika. This is an old lady. I mean, Natalie thought of her as a granny. What's so scary about that? Well, first of all, she's granny no-name. And second, who's to say they couldn't have met up with someone else? Someone a lot less harmless. Well, it's a bit soon to be going down that road, isn't it? I don't care. I don't like it. Well, what are you saying? I don't know. If this Betty was a relative, then fine. Odds on a mix-up. There could have been an accident. Or they could be in a car miles from here. These two women are supposed to have met up every week for a year, yet Sue can't tell us anything about Betty that will identify her. I think she's hiding something. Well, one minute she says her son lives in Newcastle, the next it's in Durham. Well, she's an estate. You can't expect chapter and verse. All right, so she's an estate. But, I mean, we need solid information. And until we get it, we just have to keep an open mind. About what? About whether she left her with anyone. You're saying there is no Betty? I'm saying it's a possibility. Mike Jarvis is driving the mother through the shopping district and then to her home in case they've made their way back there. What has she given us on this Betty character? <laughs> she catches a 55 bus. Is that it? That's it so far. How long now from the agreed meeting time? 50 minutes. I'm reluctant to take people off other duties, but if something doesn't turn up quickly, I'll have no choice. Well, somebody must know the old lady. Well, from what the mother said so far, Narika's not even sure that there is a Betty. Why would the mother lie? Well, perhaps she's trying to shift the blame for the daughter going missing. Can we confirm that mother and daughter went shopping together in the first place? Not so far. Well, let's try and do that. And let's make some inquiries into the family's circumstances. Talk to social services. Find out if the Lathams have given them any cause for concern. Who knows, the girl might be on the at-risk register. Hold on. There. No. I'm seeing things, I'm sorry. No, nah, it's all right. No problem. You got any kids? Nah. Few nephews and nieces. Someday, perhaps. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of time. I mean, have them, have them when you're young. They said you'll cope better with the nights. Don't believe them. You had a rough time. We moved down with uh, Jerry's job, and he he works long hours. And the days just drag by when you're alone with a kitty. Or oh, just a sec. No. Come 
morning. Morning. Um, I'm looking for an old lady and a little girl. I think they're regular customers here, together with the girl's mother. Do you recognise them? Yeah, yeah, I do. But there's usually an older lady with them. That's right. Betty, is it? Oh, I don't know the names. So many, you know. Oh, but they always sit over there. Right. Have you seen them today? No, they've usually been and gone by now. Although now I think about it, I did see the mother earlier. Well, she just popped her head in and looked around like she was looking for him. Well, what's happened? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. Can you tell me anything about the older woman? Well, not really. Well, she's no different to others of her age who come in here. Quiet, polite, and able to make a cup of tea last a lifetime. Anything else? Well, she'd come in about half ten. A bit breathless, you know, dying for a sit-down. Right, and the mother and daughter would come in separately? Yeah. I always assumed this Betty was the grandma. What made you think that? Just an impression. The little girl all over her, very fond. Always on her side of the table, you know. And the mother opposite. Out of it, I always think. Out of it? In what way? Well, not part of the group somehow. She goes off and leaves them alone for ages. But the mother leaves the little girl here with Betty? Oh, yeah. Regularly? <laughs> Fairly regularly, yeah. Well, do they always stay here? Not always, no. Do you know where she takes her when they go out? I haven't a clue, no. There's plenty of kids the same age as Natalie in an area like this. There's no shortage of playmates, is there? No, suppose not. Was she an adventurous sort of child? How do you mean? Or does she go off on her own sometimes? No, she's five. She doesn't go anywhere. I don't take her. OK? Yeah, it's fine. Well, could you round your men up and ask them if they've seen her? It's difficult. Why difficult? They're on set patrols. Look. I told your oppo we can't run around after kids. This is important. Look, what's important inside this precinct and what's important outside this precinct is two different things. Not in this case, Mr Piggott. I answer to shop tenants, not the general public. Excuse me. Something like this is everyone's responsibility. Oh, yeah. What more responsibility, eh? Do you know how much they pay me to I do this care job? I how much they pay you. It's peanuts. I'll tell you another thing. When we collar a yobbo down here for thieving, it takes an age for your lot to come and cart them off. So don't come cracking the whip here when it suits you. Do you watch the screens or don't you? Not all the time, no. Please, would you look at this picture? Mr Piggott, a child is missing. I heard the first time. And I'm telling you, if it's uniforms you want down here, get your gaffer to bring them in. Drunks, thieves, vandals. That's my business and I'm minding it. Is this the rendezvous point? Yes, Sarge. Right, I've got the TSG coming. They're going to do the shop-to-shop -shop, uh, interviews. Have we covered the precincts? Uh, not properly. We've had no cooperation from the security manager. Yeah? Yeah, well, some sort of grudge merchant. I don't know where they find them. I reckon he's either ex-con or ex-job. Yeah, more than likely. Now, we're sure that this Betty really exists? Yes, Sarge. The mother was so vague, I was beginning to have my doubts. But according to the waitress in the cafe, she and her daughter meet up with this old lady every week. Um, this is Natalie. How genuine is this Mrs Latham? Well, I'm not so sure. You think she's genuinely worried? Yeah, oh yeah, she's very agitated. It's just, I get the feeling she's more afraid for herself than her kid. Now, yeah, well, we managed to get hold of the husband. He's going to meet up with her down at the station, so you get yourself back there and see if you can find him more about this better, yeah? Frank. Well. Shop to shop, right? Yeah. Uh, I think you need uh, three inside the precinct and the rest on the street. OK, gather round and listen up. Why aren't you at the precinct? Who was waiting for them? They could be there now. We've got a whole team there, so I promise you, Natalie won't be missed. I should be looking. We should all be looking. You're more help here. What have you done? This way. I can't believe you left her with this. That's a better picture, isn't it? Yeah, let's get it photocopied. Friend. How can yeah. she be a friend? You don't even know her name. She's my only friend. You are? It's true. What are you talking about? Wait my ass off eight to late, and all you've got to do is keep her safe. All right, Mr. Latham, I think Sue's taken as much as she can handle. What are you doing to find her? All we can. I'll go and help. Mr. Latham, you can do more here. Why'd you leave us, Sue? I went to buy a dress. 
Dress? I'm not going anywhere. What do you want to dress for? Because I look a mess. No, you don't. Sue. You said earlier, every so often, you left Natalie with Betty for a few minutes. Oh, well, hardly ever. Even then, she was barely out of my sight. Well, it's just that the waitress in the precinct cab said you often left her alone with Betty. She said that? Yeah. Well, she can't have, because... She did. She's wrong. But honest. Narika, a word, please. We've checked with social services to see if they know the girl's family. They do. Apparently, Mrs. Latham suffered severe depression after Natalie was born. She rejected the baby, wouldn't look after her or feed her. She had to be closely supervised by them until two years ago. Anything since, sir? Not according to the file, but there is a warning that recurring bouts are possible. Now, it may be relevant. Perhaps you should ask the father about it? Mm. Okay. Mr. Latham, could I have a quick word outside? Why? What's wrong? It's nothing to worry about. It's just to check on a few details. Okay. Is there anything we should know about Sue? Like what? Her relationship with Natalie, her feelings towards her. Why? It might be important. For the search? I don't think she's telling us the truth. Why not? Meany. Look, we know about her postnatal depression. So why ask me? She wouldn't do anything to harm Natalie, if that's what you're asking. At one time, well, for three years it was rough. I couldn't leave her. But the last two, she seemed to be doing okay and coping. Has she left Natalie with anyone besides Betty? I don't know. I've got to work. I can't be in two places. Don't you have any family? Not down here. I move with the job. I've tried to get to make friends, but... It seems like she's found one. Look, this has got nothing to do with her being ill, so please, don't make it any worse for her. Any luck? No. Right, I think we'll check the block between Dora Road and Clayton Street next, yeah? Right. She was lonely, I suppose. We both were. And when Natalie was acting up, I couldn't do anything with her. But Betty seemed to have a way with her. You would have trusted her. Anyone would. She couldn't do any harm. She loved Natalie. Try to remember what she said about her family. And like I said, she hardly saw them. Um, she didn't get on with her daughter-in-law. Any reason? She had an abortion. Her daughter-in-law? It's the, they had three boys. Uh, she'd turn 40. That's what she decided. Betty was hoping for a granddaughter. Can I get you some tea? I've just spoken to Narika. She feels sure they're out of the shopping area now, sir. She thinks the girl's been abducted. She's inclining to that view. Well, there's no evidence to support her. No, sir. Well, if it is an abduction, they could be miles away by now. No, it still looks to me like a case of some dippy old deer has lost her compass. Well, you know the routine, Andrew. We search the immediate area, then we search it again. Oh, Narika, your security manager, Pigger. Were you serious? You want me to find out if he's got full? Save it, Donna. Life's too short to waste on the likes of him. Thanks anyway. Narika, we got something. What? Well, Sue just remembered that Betty said she'd been burgled. When? About a month ago. Oh, did she report it? Yeah, apparently. She'll be on the crime sheet. The route of the number 55 bus. So, how many are we looking at? Depends how far you veer from the actual route. Someone aged 70. I doubt she walked too far for a bus stop. Well, that's my thinking. 200 yards either side of the route, there were six burglaries that matched the approximate date. Hmm. Shop. Instruments. What's that stand for, Donna? Community care home. That's it, number 63. Well, it doesn't say anything on it. Like what? Where community care residents? Do you know where she is? 
Well, she'll be with her daughter-in-law and granddaughter. Well, that's what she likes to call them anyway. But they're not. No. But we're allowed our little deceptions here. Is Betty in some sort of trouble? We just want to talk to her, that's all. Oh. Has she lived here long? Five or six years. Do you know her well? As well as anyone, I dare say. I don't pry. People tell me things if they want to. Do you know if she has any real family? I don't think so. How did she come to live here? She was discharged from a mental hospital. She'd been in and out of it for years. Is she still receiving treatment? None that I'm aware of. What form did her illness take? Depression. It started years ago, when she lost a baby after a late pregnancy. It affected her very badly. I don't think she's ever really recovered. Yeah, Betty Mason, age 73, 63 Mallam Street. We're informed Does she have any favourite haunts? Anything you can think of? Well, she doesn't go out much. She likes Gateside Park, I think. Oh, and I've heard her talk about walking by the river. There's nothing. Right, then, let's check out the park. We understand the woman's got a history of mental illness, sir. Wonderful. We're checking now. Yeah, well, you better step up the pressure on this one, Andrew, and widen the search. I'm checking the availability of two more TSG units and the dog teams. Right. sent me to find you. Where's Betty? I couldn't wake her. You couldn't wake her? Yeah, Sarah Oscar from 517. Go ahead. Yeah, we're at Gateside Park. We found Natalie. She's safe and well. Betty? Let's go back to your mum, shall we? What about Betty? We'll look after Betty, sweetheart. Come on, come on. Sarah Oscar from 517. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Betty's here as well. Or rather, not here. Ambulance required. And tell them there's no need to rush. <laughs> 